guys, it's Starshay and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be opening some more Mathem chests in Lord of the Rings Rise to War. So if you guys do enjoy this video then please do drop a like, comment and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn on those post notifications. Anyway, let's get straight into okay, it. Okay guys, so today we're going to be opening slightly fewer chests than I have before as I'm only going to, be, going to be doing about 25 or so, unlike my previous soft 100 and the other one I think was 50 something. So yeah, let's get started and let's hope we get something good obviously i'm hoping that we can pull a t3 invite and if we have to pull one i'm hoping for galadriel or if not galadriel then maybe probably elrond or thrandil because i like elves a lot and even though i know those are probably you know commanders that people sell the worst t3s i don't mind i i want them anyway because you know they are some of my favorite characters from the movies and the books, so yeah. Anyway, let's start our first pool and see what we get. Okay, come on. Oh, okay, so we get an Alpen Dirk. I actually want to get a Cutlass if possible, a Scout's Mail, and a Horseman's Helm. As I'm trying to outfit my Feodan right now, so maybe we'll get lucky? Nope. That has no luck so far, okay. Come on. Ooh, T3? Oh, no, just lost Quenya score. Okay. And on our case. Uh, first two rounds, Allied Commander, 16.7% chance against the silence. Silence immunity? Oh, uh, okay. Not really what we wanted. But okay. Just give us a Cutlass. Or give us a T3. Nope. Another Quenya score, so that goes towards Galadriel. Ooh, Dawn. Oh, another one of these. We have quite a few dawns, I have to say. Oh, and we got another Elven Dark. Okay. This was actually a good pool, I mean, even though it's, you know, it's Dawn of all stuff, at least, you know. It's a, it's a legendary item, and we got the Elven Dark, and we also got that Krenia score. So that's pretty cool. And we have five more medals, so yeah, let's, let's hope we can get something. One of those items that I want for Theoden, come on. Another Quenya score. And. Ah, uh, we got some quilted armor. Okay, so. And it's got attunement, which gives more commander focus. That'll be good for something like, you know, my Arwen, or even to put on Galadriel if I eventually get her. But uh, yeah. So that's gonna be all that we open today. Unless, do we wanna. Nah, that's 2000. I wanna keep some gems for other stuff. But let's just have a look at what we got. So we got a whole bunch of. Green, a bunch of blue gear, and we got four pieces of purple. So that's two elven dirks, a quilted armor on a case, and we get got a dawn sword. So yeah, respect items. We got three Quenya scores. That's nine hundred. Let's just dump that on our Galadriel, since yeah, we have no T3s unlocked unfortunately. But you know, maybe one day we'll pull an invite. For now, we're just gonna try grab her this way. We had four thousand and fifty respect out of the nine thousand we need. So. Yeah, and we got some more respect here, which is cool. We can dump that into our A1. But yeah, that's today's video, guys. So I just, you know, it's just, just a short video. I just wanted to open up some chests, you know, with you guys. See what I got. Unfortunately, nothing really great. We did get this, at least. So we can use that to upgrade our Matic of the Iron Hills. So that's good, at least. I What I did want was I wanted a Horseman's Helm, a Scout's Mail, or a Cutlass. Just because uh, I'm trying to upgrade my... Well, I'm trying to get gear that will go well for Theoden, so yeah, fortunately we didn't get that, but you know, maybe next time. But we did get a, you know, we did get, we at least got one legendary item, which is better than, you know, getting nothing at all. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy this video, then, you know, let me know down below in the comment section and I'll do some more. Or if you guys prefer, you know, just to do those much bigger 100 pool videos and stuff, then let me know and then, you know, instead of doing these smaller pools like the 50 I did last time, I believe, and this 25 I've done now, I'll just save up medals until I can do a nice big 100, 150, 200 pool video, etc. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay guys, I know I said video was over and yeah, I am back again. But I've been getting a lot of questions about, you know, Season 3. A lot of people have been saying that Season 3 has been really hard, you know, in terms of resources, starting positions, all of that stuff. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. I will be doing a video, uh, a overview video of season three, my thoughts and feelings on season three, as well as what I thought about the starting, 
the you know lim the more limited resources in comparison to previous seasons as well as the smaller starting locations for each faction and you know just how diff how it affected the gameplay compared to season one and season two as well as what i think would be better or what i would like to see happen anyway or hope to happen anyway in season four and i'll also show you guys our map so right now uh erebor which is what i'm playing and linden are unified and gondor and lothorian are unified um Varyx and gundabad were unified but i'm not sure if they still are honestly uh, i think they are but yeah anyway they were unified and they had uh, also allied with rohan so Variags and Gundabad promised Rohan the ring, or the Variags promised Rohan the ring, and you know, then they allied with Gundabad, and Gundabad found out about it then. But yeah, and they were kind of dominating, like the Variags, they owned all this land over here. They owned Seldwin Vale, they owned Greater Rune, they owned uh, all this stuff here. And then we've just been able to finally beat them back, though it's been a, you know, a long, hard fight, and especially with our startup, uh, obviously due to the more limited resources this season and the smaller starting area is there's been a lot of resource scramble and stuff like that but i'm not going to go too in, de in depth with all that now as i said i'm going to be doing a season 3 overview or recap video and i'll go into all of that there anyway i just wanted to quickly show you guys so basically all i'm going to be doing with this gear because i actually had a few people ask me about blue gear and green gear and stuff so i just wanted to say Green gear, you know, that all this green gear I just pulled from my opening. I'm going to trash it. I'm going to use it to impart wisdom on my commanders and get an extra skill point or two. But blue gear, blue gear for free-to-play players is actually really, really good. And that's because blue gear can be, like, you're not going to have enough purple or legendary gear. Especially as a free-to-play or even as me. I spend, I'm not a big spender, but I spend a bit. And I don't really have that great gear, but... You know, so as a free to play, you're not going to have a lot of purple or legendary gear. So what you're going to want to do instead is keep your blue gear, keep stuff like this. This would make a really good sword for someone like Theoden or Eowyn, you know. It would make a really good sword for a cavalry commander or, you know, this axe or this Urukai pike. This works really well for a damage commander like Hurgorn or something like that as it gives them a lot of might. I think it's like plus 30 might. Same with these uh, helmets here, the old case helmets. Like I even have one fully upgraded. And it gives plus 30 might to Aragorn. So if you're just trying to upgrade the might stat of a damage commander, you know, it helps out a lot. So, yeah. And also, uh, in case, you know, for those of you guys that were interested, I did get my A1 to uh, respect level 10. And I got her unique item, which we actually did a video on that. So you guys can go check it out. And now I'm just dumping whatever respect I have into her because I'm just trying to see how high respect level I can get her. As well as, you know, at high respect levels, you obviously have more skill points. So... You can put that into her skills and let me just go and actually upgrade this a bit so yeah so there we go so what i use on a1 as well is just through here and cleave riding excellence i have white lady of rohan as well frontline rescue and nobility and that's just the main skills then most people will probably tell you to just put all the rest of your points into shield maiden which gives melee units a 40 percent chance of reducing physical damage received by up to i think 20 percent when you have this maxed out but what i like to do as well is i like to put two points into down helm and one point into cripple and the reason for this is because uh, against one enemy target it reduces the target speed to zero for two rounds which means they'll act last every round so it's, it's pretty helpful and i know this was a chest opening video and i'm kind of going off track a bit but yeah i just wanted um i just wanted to you know these are things that i don't really want to make a separate video on you know i don't want to make a video just to say yo on Aowen, you know, use cripple because it's this or, you know, uh, anything like that. Or just like, you know, use your blue gear, save it up, it's good. Use it on your commanders, it's free to play, play, it can definitely help you out. Like, I'll definitely be using this probably on one of my, on maybe uh, Aoma or something. I'll be using the Orc Scimitar or Ranged Staggers, gives both might and speed. And this gives Mounted Archer's damage dealt plus 5%, so if you use this with Bow Knights, obviously it'll be very helpful. But yeah, I just I don't want to make separate videos on all of this. I just decided to add this on to my 25 chest opening video. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. And this is actual, this is the actual ending, okay? I promise. Anyway, I'll see you guys. Ichigo.